Yeah, hello, my name is Roland Hus. I'm uh, from Red Hat, working there on OpenShift Serverless, which is the product based on Knative. And in the community, I'm part of the TOC and also uh, the Knative client uh, working group lead, or one of the client working group leads. Yeah, that's me. I'm Evan Anderson. Um, I've been doing Knative for the last four years or so, and I'm currently um, security working group lead and on the TOC, um, currently at VMware. Hi, my name is Whitney Lee. I'm a developer advocate at VMware. I teach and learn cloud concepts from behind my light board. I'm here on the panel representing um, new learners in general. I wrote my first line of code in 2019, and I've made a lot of content lately about the Knative project. And I'm Sebastian Guesgen. I'm the co-founder of uh, Trigger Mesh, and uh, I was involved uh, in Knative almost since the beginning. Okay, excellent. So I'm Max, I work for IBM, and I'll try to be moderating. So the, the panel is about the past, present, and future. I figured I will start with three questions on those three topics, but I want you to be involved. So after those three questions, I will look for audience members with questions and then run to you so you can ask your questions, so get ready to be prepared. And then I will ask the panelists to limit their answers so that we can have time to make sure we get to the questions. Okay? All right, very good. I feel seen. <laughs> All right, so the first, and people don't have to also answer every question, like everybody has to answer, right? Like if you don't have an answer, then that's fine. Let's move to the next question. Okay, so the first question I have, which is sort of talking about the past, let's just make it fun. Do you have a story or an interesting kind of recollection about how Canadian started or uh, maybe something fun about your colleagues, maybe about Matt or, you know, whoever? Like, tell us a story if you have one or how you so, started with Canadian. Yeah. So um, this is a little bit of prehistory. Um, Vile over there um, and myself and um, Brett Clauser at Google were actually working on a next generation of the App Engine Managed VMs project and trying to see if we could move things to Kubernetes. And um, shortly after that, there was a blog post that Joe Beta ended up highlighting saying, you know, basically Kubernetes is too hard for developers. You know, hey, if you want to start an application, you need to understand pods and containers and deployments and replica sets and services and horizontal pod autoscalers and you know all of a sudden everything you needed to know about your application fell out your ear because you packed all these networking and distributed systems concepts in and we said hey i bet we could do something about that and that's how it started and this is circa 2017 2018 I think 2017. Okay, so it only took two years after Kubernetes, you know, sort of. It was. It was. What Vila? Do you remember? Was it September? I see. That we that we started building a proof of concept. Okay, cool. Anybody else has a story about the kind of the history of Knative, the past? Okay. Sure, past. I, ha I have a story. So, I had created Kubeless. I think that was December 2016. You know, there was a lot of. Uh, uh, FAS solutions, you know, in the Kubernetes space. And, uh, you know, fast forward to 2018, I'm contacted by uh, Do It Clinton, yep. Clinton at Google. He's like, hey, we're doing something and so on. And at the time, well, you know, I was transitioning from uh, another company. And uh, he said, you know, uh, do you want to be part of the Knative announcement at, uh, at Google Next? That was July 2018. And I said, you know, sure, but I, I don't have a company yet. So, you know, with my co-founder, we rushed to get a, a logo, 400 bucks on 99 designs. Uh, we, you know, we called each other, we came up with a name, and, uh, and suddenly it was funny, if you go back to YouTube, you see the announcement, and it's like, uh, you know, thank you to IBM and T-Mobile and Pivotal and Trigger Mesh, which was, a, you know, not incorporated yet. <laughs> so, you know, that was, that was quite funny. That's pretty cool. Anybody else? Or we'll go to the next one. Yeah, actually, I joined uh, Canadian quite late in the game. I think it was 22, but uh, 20, something like that, two years. Um, and yeah, I, I was always fascinated by the by the really the, the ease of the developer experience, and really, this was really great. And I really wanted to, to be part. And I have to say, I was really accepted by the community. Very, there was a very very reception. There was a very 
very nice community to, to join and I really enjoyed it. And I actually can only encourage everybody here to join the Canadian community, which is really a great one. <laughs> So the next question is very specific. It's going to be the present. We are here, first Canadian Con. Obviously, we are part of the CNCF. Uh, tell me what you are looking for the most with being part of the CNCF. So maybe we'll start with you, you, with you Whitney. Uh, like, what, what do you expect the CNCF to do for us or maybe to hurt us? Or No, I don't think so. Right? Like, but you tell me. What do you think um, you know, this, this means to you? being part of CNCF? Actually, I think this is maybe a good opportunity for someone to explain to me what the, what it means to, like, like what this milestone means for y'all. So let me ask Carlos here. So you, you were instrumental to making it part of the CNCF. What, what does it mean and how, how hard was it to put K-Native in CNCF? Like what, what, what are the things we had to do? Well, convincing, I guess Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, yeah, the CNCF um, is a, a lot of people actually think that we were in CNCF. A lot of people talk to me and say, I see your logo in the CNCF la landscape and, and they think that we are in the CNCF, which uh, is a good thing, but it's not, uh, was not real. So uh, moving to the CNCF, it gives us an umbrella of um, services and help in terms of um, legal services, uh, marketing services, infrastructure. We're running infrastructure. Uh, thankfully for, for Google that started the project, but now we're moving into uh, our infra and people like Hippie, uh, Caleb, I think is here. Uh, those folks from IP helps now, uh, now. So we grow the community. I think it gets us closer to Kubernetes. Uh, so one of the things that I did and encourage is uh, to join and meet people from Kubernetes. I know a lot of folks already have like relationships uh, with Kubernetes. Um, I try to join SIG release, so I'm building a network there, and that way we can build a better um, community, right, between CNCF and Knative. So basically there's a lot, you know, behind that. But what does it mean to you, for instance? So what I'm hearing is it moves you closer to Kubernetes, but also it sounds like there's a lot of uh, time, money, and effort put into this project, and when it's when it's owned by a private company, that is a little bit dangerous. There's a lot of trust being put in Google, and now the trust is like it's there, like it's owned by the community now, and not by an, an individual entity. And yeah. Google is not evil, so we don't have to. Worry. <laughs> yes, nothing against Google. So, okay, I'll do a quick one before uh, before even. Uh, so, you know, for me, CNC moving to CNCF is is really big for Knative. I really thought you know that it would happen much sooner. Right, you know, early 2018. I mean, you know, that would have been great. The the, the big advantage to me is that you know, for users, uh, they want to know that the project is sustainable, that it's not dominated by one vendor. So that you know, people want to know that uh, they. I mean, they want to de-risk the investment in a particular software. Right. So you know, by putting in CNCF, it doesn't change anything in terms of how you contribute or even the license or, you know, things like this. But you now know that it's, you know, under a, an umbrella that's really de-risking, you know, your investment and your choice of saying, hey, I'm going to use Knative. If I, you know, if I fight with Google, I can ask Red Hat. If I fight with Red Hat, I can go to VMware. And then I can go to Trigger Mesh. It's, it's better for else. customers. So it's really de-risking, you know, your, your choice and then, you know, broadening the community. Um, oh, I was just going to point out one other thing. The way that we're all here, we talked at San Diego in 2019 about it would be cool to do a Knative Con, um, but the logistics without an umbrella organization where everybody, you know, who wants to participate can give some money to a central place to get that organization to happen. It's so much harder. So um, that's one of the things I'm excited about is it's going to be easier to do things as a community um, under an umbrella like CNCF. Yeah, I, th I think I can also back uh, Sebastian's uh, um, opinion about that it's really much easier to, to adopt or increase the adoption of Knative when you are on a neutral foundation. This is really, I think, the, the big big win for me and also for, for users, I think, because they have the, the kind of the security that they are not go away anytime soon, let's say like this. Yeah, and, and you know, 
not to dwell on this, but I'll give you a specific example is that a lot of time when somebody wants to do something at IBM, with IBM, they go to me as if I represent IBM. But, you know, I may not be there, you know, or, or you know, maybe I'm busy with something else. And in the case of Knative, uh, you know, Isamal was per the person that represented Google for us. But now we'll have an organization that we can go to and there's a formal process and so on, right? So you don't have to be the one always there, even though you were great, so thank you. All right, so last question from me and then we'll pass it to you. So think about your questions. Um, looking to the future, uh, what do you think is missing in Knative that you'd love to see? Uh, maybe it's a community thing, maybe it's a specific feature, uh, maybe it's, um, you know, organizational thing. Uh, think about, like, what do you think you would like to see? So let's go to Evan first, since you haven't started. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> I have a huge list. Um, but I think the big thing that I'm really excited about for the future is that we've been improving and learning on how to make this software in the open for the last couple of years. And, um, you know, we've got a big feature list of stuff that, you know, eventing wants to work on some task flows. Security has a big list of stuff to do. Um, there's neat stuff going on in the networking space and auto scaling and functions. Um, but we've got a framework for doing this all and for cooperating and coordinating it. And um, I'm looking forward to that getting better and better. Okay, I'll, I'll give one. So, you know, one, one thing I realized fairly recently is that when you look at Lambda, what people are doing on, on Lambda, uh, I mean, it, it's not new, but they're really building REST APIs, right? And I think I, for, for some time, I forgot about this, but they use API gateway and then they use functions to really build uh, a REST API. Um, so we can do this, you know, uh, different ways with, uh, with Knative. Uh, but then there is also async API. So I want to bounce back on, on, on your talk, and uh, it's, a, it's a big, big use, use case, async API. Maybe not so much for, you know, what you described, like long-running jobs, but just, you know, event-based integration where, you know, we work a lot on this. Uh, but we, we have to really, you know, think deeper about, you know, how do we support, yeah, async API, asynchronous flows, connections to different syncs that may be asynchronous, you know, things like this. So I think it's, it's going to be a big, uh, okay. a big thing moving forward. Okay, cool. Whitney, you ready or? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Uh, technically, when I've given a couple talks about Knative at conferences, I see interest in duration-based rollout. So I'm excited to hear about when that comes to fruition so I can pass that along. And then community-wise, I have some experience volunteering with the Kubernetes community. And um, in, the, in the Knative side, I maybe haven't I think there could be like a more of a welcoming committee or a really clear place to where to go when you're first getting started to be able to navigate all the different working groups and and um, so like Maria's presentation earlier, I didn't as someone new to the community, I had no idea that group existed, and so now I'm really excited to participate in that. So how can we um, amplify that to someone who's who's approaching the community and a little intimidated by everyone about where to go first. Yeah, and, and Maria has been very good at keeping this running every month. We have a talk and it's a very good talk usually. I'll see y'all at the next one. Yeah, very good. Yeah, actually I'm also very excited about the more boring things like uh, security as mentioned already. So this is really the things which uh, uh, people are really requesting for production re uh, ready workloads. So this is something I hope that we will make a big leap forward in the, in the near future. And the other thing which I'm also very kind of a passion for is the developer experience. I, I think that Kenneth gets the abstraction quite exact right for, for developer application to combine everything into this single resource and we can do, do better. I think function is a, is a very, very impressive direction that we are going to and I, I really uh, hope to, to see there more, more traction even. Yeah, keep pushing that and if you have not tried KN, eventually Navid and, and David are going to talk about that and that helps a lot. Okay, so who has a question? I'm going to pick some people. If you I have, have a question. question. Oh, you have a question. Okay. Yeah. So I first heard about Knative when um, some coworkers in my same stand-up would talk about it. And I was so new to tech that I didn't really understand what it was. And so I was like, what, what is that to Knative they keep mentioning? And I heard that it's serverless and that it's attached to Istio. And it's, so it's heavy. And I'm wondering 
what y'all are doing to help get rid of those stereotypes. Because now that I'm deep in the project, I'm like, oh, it doesn't need us, yo. And like serverless is cool, but I wouldn't even say that's the best thing. Like the ease of deployment seems like the best Should thing. I ask these guys to okay, yeah. <laughs> this is like the opposite of a panel. So that's my question. Um, so actually, the Istio thing is kind of funny because that was one of the first pieces of feedback when we launched, and I feel like we reacted to it pretty quickly. Matt probably remembers the exact timeline, but um, I feel like they maybe you know it was July that we launched, and without having thought about it, maybe February or so of the following year, we had Ambassador or Glue or one of the other gateway implementations and um, it may not I don't know if anyone's done a like here's what it looks like when a request comes through Knative but we do a substantial amount of processing on that gateway and I'm, I'm excited that the gateway API is going to finally standardize some of those capabilities but um, the, your standard Kubernetes ingress is not sufficient for what Knative needs which is why we have all these different adapter layers and I think that pluggability is really good, but it sounds like we have not. Uh, <laughs> Matt's found the the docs. It looks like, but um, that pluggability I'll, is not advertised as much as we need. Yeah, I'll just share a little story because you know we're, we're between friends here. Uh, so yeah, remove. I mean, removing the dependency on Istio was a very early feedback, and I agree with you. It was addressed very quickly, but you know the the perception that it's still a dependency persists which is, you know, interesting from an almost social perspective. Uh, the, the, the funny thing is I remember having a discussion with, I think, Brian, Brian Gregg, Ryan Gregg, the PM at Ryan the Gregg. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was telling him, hey, we are running, we are running Knative and we have, you know, we have Istio and the full service mesh. And, you know, that thing is hard to debug and monitor. And then there is a huge, you know, um, uh, startup time and so on. And he said, oh yeah, but Sebastian, you know, in Cloud Run, we disabled the mesh. <laughs> so, you know, that was, that was very funny to me because in fact, they were just using Istio as an ingress and they didn't use the actual mesh capability. So, you know, that's it. Okay, we have an audience question. So I asked the audience, if you have a question, raise your hand after and I'll come to you, okay? Uh, so. Hey, it's me again. I'm Michael Gash, I work at VMware. Can you hear me? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, well, okay, uh, so my question is not so much to Evan because I've talked to him about that, so it's more to the three of you. Uh, in, so in Knative, we talk a lot about developer experience and making developer experience better. And my work, uh, my daily work with Knative involves uh, working with administrators, operator kind of type of personas. And I realized that a lot of these uh, persons um, don't consider themselves to be a developer. So the, the world itself is kind of overloaded a little bit, right? Because I know that Knative doesn't want to be just for developers or business developers, right? It's for everyone. But conceptually and perceptually, a lot of people think, oh, that's not for me. This is purely for JavaScript, whatever Java de developers. So my question is, and especially if we look at AWS, Lambda, and some of their uh, eventing services, which are heavily used for automation, notification, like not necessarily business logic, the way we understand business logic, right? But it's super successful there. So my question is, how can we grow uh, the Knative community, especially these kind of personas in the future to get our numbers up on one hand, but also appeal more to these uh, persons? Yeah, so maybe I can answer this first. So I think one of the big things that uh, really drive this kind of adoption is to have more sources. So thanks, for, thanks to Strukramesh to, to creating tons of sources like that. And uh, actually, really, I also think that, for example, for Lambda, the big, big asset is really that you have so many servers that you can connect to. It's not so much the programming model, how you could connect them, but the sheer availability of everything like that. And we need to, to level up on that. On, on that capability to, to have an easier way how you can create sources and bring things together. So, yeah. I don't think I have anything to add on this one. Uh, so, um, I mean, user experience, you know, to me is, is huge these days. And, and honestly, I would say that Knative is super hard to use, right? And I've been involved since the beginning. When you look at all the APIs, all the constructs, even things that we've done at Trigger Mesh, if you take somebody who is new, 
uh, and, and, and they try to use it, uh, it's challenging, right? You, lots of things that you need to understand, right? Uh, ingress, cloud events, you know, things like this. So I think we really need to do a much better job in terms of developer experience, right? It's not onboarding people, it's really, you know, what's their conceptual model when they want to consume something like Knative and when they want to build an application, right? And uh, yeah, I think right now we're, we're, we're falling, you know, really bad on this on this front do you have data that you can share like survey results and so on no 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 we okay so it's just a feeling because you say super hard i no, feel it's like not, it's not a feeling it's just even us trying to use things uh -huh. if, you, if you try to build a real application with like events and so on you know uh you're going to struggle right okay. Wri writing all the yaml i mean it's a no, no no did you use kn that's what i'm talking about because there are there we have a solution i'm not saying it's it it may not be as good as you 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 need but we do have a solution and, and at this, at some point they're going to give a talk about that i'm not trying to defend it i'm just saying that you know i'd love to know the level if it's yaml yes that's a problem and but even even it, yeah. you know it's interesting but even k and i totally respect it i understand i understand it but when you when you ask somebody who is totally new to start using kn uh -huh. They need they need Kubernetes. They need Knative. They need Tecton. They need to connect to a Docker registry and so on. There there are lots of things happening that are very hard for you know uh, an operator you know uh, to, to to get on board. Okay, that's good. Okay, so that's feedback. Uh, anybody wants to add to this? Otherwise, we have a question from the audience. I was I was just going to say that I know Whitney recently was just coming on board with eventing, and so I was hoping maybe you could talk a little bit about your experience trying to figure out what all this stuff was. <laughs> Uh, so I, I do a streaming lightboard show, and what I do is, I, from behind the lightboard, I have a guest come on and teach me a concept, and then I draw it as I understand it. It's a pretty long format show, um, so I had Carlos come on and teach me about Knative eventing, and I, uh, sorry, serving, and I drew it out, and then I had Mauricio come on and teach me about eventing, and I drew it out. So um, those are some beginner resources to at least get the high-level concepts down, and then for me personally, once I have that mental model, in place, the rest of it, making making use of it, comes together much more easily. Excellent. Okay. So mention your name. And uh, hello, guys. Uh, Dhruv this side from working with JP Morgan and Chase. Uh, so I have a question. Basically, the current function model is very uh, HTTP request centric and very driven by the HTTP request, right? So like, uh, I just wanted to understand that if in the future, is there a scope for a job like uh, uh, support where you can have uh, batch data transformations and administrative task support as well? We just had a presentation about that earlier, yeah? I uh, the Benthos one? Yeah. Uh, that's definitely one thing that you can do, particularly if you're looking to fan out your work a lot. You can basically, um, if I, apologies if I misrepresent Benthos here, but it looked like Benthos was basically, you know, queuing up one request for each piece of work and then firing it off, you know, at a Knative service. The other thing is you still got all of Kubernetes out there. So there's nothing says you have to only use Knative. It's totally fine to reach for batch v1 job or cron job if that's the right tool. Um, you know, Knative, the, the K there is really is for Kubernetes and all that Kubernetes is there. So um, I don't think we have specific plans for like a job type interface at the moment. Someone from uh, Google about cloud run jobs actually. So I thought maybe like on a, something on similar lines, uh, we might have something on Knative as well in the open source community. Um, I, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, Did you want yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I, I kind of share the same feeling like Evans, actually. I like really the, the, the focus that Knative has on this particular workload. And uh, actually, not, nothing for, um, pr prevents you from combining this with other workload types and other workflow frameworks. So actually, I, I'm, I'm more in the camp like stay focused, stay, stay make that what you're doing, make it good and, and make it well. Yeah, yeah and Chimilis Blog, for instance, uh, at IBM in our code engine, uh, we have a batch. Uh, job in there, and I think it just uses Kubernetes. So it's basically just putting it all together into one uh, pane. Okay, other questions? Yes, so we have a question. Engineer name and association. 
Hi, I'm uh, Anthony from Gemba in the UK. Uh, there's a lot of talk around AWS and obviously Lambda is a, uh, a huge service used a, a lot. Um, you're on about kind of de-risking. Do we or do people have, uh, obviously your huge companies, uh, talks with AWS and speaking about Lambda and how we can try and make sure that the, the, the project continues? So should I put somebody on the spot? So we do have uh, AWS representative here, but le let's get the answer here. I don't want to embarrass him. He doesn't want yeah, to answer. Yeah, so act actually I, I would say so for, for AWS for the uh, AppRunner is more the, the equivalent to Knative. And uh, because it's container-based, so actually everything in Knative is container-based and we are trying to provide a Lambda-like experience for containers as well. Uh, from the with native native containers, so actually there's no. I think for AWS there's no real. So this is my feeling: is there's no real need to go to Knative because they have already their tech, and the same is probably true for Microsoft as well. And and yeah, so this is kind of my uh, impression that that yeah, that's the reason why AWS is not so engaged in the Knative community. Any other answer? Can't speak to that. So I didn't quite. Got the question. Basically, uh, if we, should we talk to AWS? How do we engage them? Do you think there's a way to make the you know? Uh, so very, bridge, I guess. Do you yeah, ever very, talk to very AWS? Very early on, very early on, you know, one one use case we worked on was actually uh, function compatibility between Lambda and Knative. So if you had a function that you could deploy to Lambda, could you actually easily deploy it on-prem with Knative? So you know that that you can do uh, no problem, and and now the fact that Lambda supports containers straight up, you know, it's I, w I would say it's even it's even easier, right? Uh, but you know, overall, I mean, when you know, to me, when you look at uh, you know serverless, what it is, it's really a fully managed service, right? So it's the you know people not wanting to care about the scalability, the operation of the of the system. It's fully managed, you know, cloud, right? Uh, you know the the interface per se, like the function thing and the function interface, and the, you know the, the the way users consume it. I think it's actually you know a little bit secondary. Okay, so by chance, or maybe not, uh, we actually have Wolan here, who is the director of AWS Serverless. So let me ask him to make some concrete statement and promises about the future. <laughs> And no promises. Um, director for Solution Architecture for Serverless at AWS. I'm here. I'm interested for sure. Uh, before AWS, I was at IBM with Carlos and Max, and so um, have a lot of experience. All I could say is we have a lot of customers on AWS that run Kubernetes um, and use Knative on EKS or even Rosa as well, right? So Rosa's another uh, managed OpenShift offering, and they run Knative as well, right? Um, obviously, Lambda and the ecosystem is huge. Um, you mentioned the integration. Um, but I think there's always room for conversation, for sure. Um, I'm here all week. Let's talk. Excellent. Yeah. I, I saw that AWS Lambda Thank also you. recently um, offered HTTP endpoints directly to Lambdas yeah. without having to go through API Gateway, so. Yeah, so well, Wolan is here. Let's talk to him. Like to um, think that maybe we had a little thing, little little imp impetus for that. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Aha, uh -huh. perfect. Yes, let's do it. You don't have to introduce yourself. <laughs> um, so I didn't introduce myself. I'm Carlos Santana. I'm on steering uh, for Knative. I uh, work for IBM. Uh, one of the things I'm doing lately is doing uh, user interviews for admins and operators. So not we already did a, a round of developer experience, but uh, one of the things that uh, the working group is doing is finding out what are the admins doing with Knative, what are the struggles they have. Um, like Roland said, one piece of feedback, a lot of folks are using EKS and trying to figure out what is the best solution for integration with observability, like things they're asking, like how do I integrate with Datadog, or how do I integrate with CloudWatch, or how do I integrate, how do I do monitoring, observability, tracing? So what are your thoughts in looking into that area, talking about the future? So uh, I don't know for Kennedy specifically, but uh, at Trigger Mesh, we've, we've done a, a huge effort to, to look at all our components 
and expose uh, metrics that can be scraped with Prometheus. And, and we do a lot of uh, configuration on, uh, on Amazon to make sure that you know, all, the, all the logs get properly to CloudWatch and that they're ordered uh, you know, properly so that you can you know, look at your logs and, uh, and so on. So yes, there is a lot of effort in uh, observability and uh, uh, logging. Before you go in much more about what's coming up for that, can you describe to someone new like me about what's current, what you're currently doing well, and then what you hope to improve? Oh, I've got too many scars here. We're all do we're doing it all badly. Um, so, um, again, I'm I'm looking at Matt over there because Matt's familiar with a lot of this stuff too. Um, so the early work on Knative um, attempted to sort of split the world using OpenCensus and the Stackdriver libraries. And so you could either export to Prometheus through OpenCensus or you could export to Stackdriver. And um, that code is still a bit of a mess. And if someone would like to tilt at that, um, I'm happy to talk with them afterwards. Um, but yeah, observability is a big problem. One thing that I feel like I don't do well, I suspect a lot of us who are deep in the project don't do well, is trying to use it as an end user with only end user permissions. It's super easy to debug things when you have cluster admin compared with you only have permissions in this namespace and maybe some monitoring dashboards. Um, and I think we could do better there, and I would I would love to see someone tackle that. <laughs> Any question from the audience? Ah, there we go. Because I have plenty of questions if you don't, uh, but let's go for it. Uh, my name is Leo. Uh, a small question about uh, the difference and the benefit between Knative and Keda project. Uh, I am using a Keda project, and uh, in the use case of, I have Kafka and the microservice that consume uh, messages from Kafka, and I will will like to know what is the benefit uh, to use Knative uh, in this uh, use case. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, I typically distinguish Keda and Knative. That Knative is really it's all about consumption-based scaling based on HTTP traffic. So Kada is not so good at that. Kada is really good for specific scalers where you have, as you mentioned, uh, Kafka scaling on Kafka messages within a topic or other systems. And it's also pull versus push. So actually, I think they are not really uh, competing against each other. They are really complementary. So actually, you can c combine both of them very nicely to provide a super duper auto-scaling solution for everything. But, but actually, uh, Skater and Knave have their strengths on different side of the spectrum, so to say. I, oh, I've got a couple other things. If, if Kada is working for you, you should keep using it. Like, I'm not going to tell you go switch to something else because it's the new hotness. Use the stuff that works for you. Um, there is an interesting sort of philosophical difference as well between Kada and Knative. So, um, where Knative sort of came from is let's improve the developer experience. Oh, and by the way, auto scaling should be part of that. Have a URL that you can reach to you know access things and so forth should be part of that. But it's sort of all those decisions build on each other um, to kind of reach a point. And when you start trying to take a leg away, um, you end up with something that you lose more than one, you lose more than one support when you try to pull one piece out. Um, Kada is very much an add-on to the standard Kubernetes style of things. So you get all the standard deployment and so forth management things, um, which is great if you're comfortable with them. And if that's a lot to learn, um, I'd say you know Knative can be somewhat of an easier on-ramp because we say, here's a service, um, you know, here's an event source, you know, plug them together, and you've got two things to think about. You don't. You know, you don't necessarily have to think about all the warts that deployment has built up over time. Sebastian or Whitney, do you want to add anything? Uh, 
Yeah, related to Kafka, I don't think uh, I agree with uh, Roland and, uh, and Ivan on, uh, on the, the, the scaling. And it's, there is no real competition. But re, you know, with respect to Kafka, if, you, if you're thinking about Knative, it's more about uh, whether you want to move away from Kafka Connect, for example, which is all about defining your sources and syncs into Kafka, uh, whether you want to do data transformation differently than what you're doing right now with Kafka. Um, and there with Knative, you're going to be much more declarative, right? So, you know, whether that's a, a big benefit for you or not, you know, that depends on what you're doing. But I think, you know, you, you have to compare more on the Kafka Connect side of things rather than, uh, you know, scaling or, you know, your use of Keda, right? Well, that's, a good, that's a good point. Um, with Keda, you say, hey, I'm looking, I'm in, scale this based on the depth of this queue. But there's nothing that forces that to connect back to the application code that is necessarily reading for the same queue. So you could actually have a different queue name and probably get some really wild scaling results. Anybody else? No? Oh. I'm burning to ask a question. I'm burning. But yeah, I just wanted to add a few comments to the observability conversation earlier. Um, so late last year, I think we redid some of our, most of our observ observability stack to kind of make it easier for end users to get started, which is kind of my perspective as a systems engineer, DevOps person, as opposed to a software developer. So we did some work last year. So I was wondering how the community found that work and, w and if there were any gaps and things that needed to be improved. What's the name of it? Oh yes, yeah, so, uh, apologies. So, so last year, a lot, there were a lot of conversations around gaps in our monitoring stack. So we, so I and a few other people went ahead and like created some Grafana dashboards, joined all the dots together, and clarified the documentation how, when you deploy Knative to a cluster, how how you go ahead and be in a place where you can see all the metrics and everything. I remember so, that. Yeah. So I was wondering how the community saw that and if they still feel that there's an observability gap. Yeah, I, I think we have still a gap in general communication about new features to the community. So we, we had, I think, the community meetings where we had some, some section where we're talking about news in the, in, in, in the product itself. And I think, and I totally agree that uh, we need to, 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 to get better as a community to, to announce the stuff that we are doing and how we can use it more. And I think having this kind of regular meetings or scenarios where people can join and can get information about it, then of course the, the website could uh, list it maybe more prominently. Uh, yeah, so I, I agree that it's probably, uh, there's still something to do. I, I don't think I've heard a lot of feedback either way, which um, as an optimist, sometimes I think, oh, that means that nobody's deeply upset, but it also could mean that no one is using it. Um, I don't know how we measure the difference. If you can figure it out, I would love to know. Please tell me. <laughs> And there's also a TOC, right? Like meeting where you can come and kind of present to people. Uh, it's very open. Uh, Evan runs it. Uh, you know, usually there's a space for like a new new topic. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? Ah. Yeah, I'm uh, Joris from uh, Ortec Finance. Um, since VMware and, and, and OpenShift, of Tanzu and OpenShift is, is, is represented, I, I'm, I'm still struggling with the, with the question that, like, Key Native works really well in the in the, the Google Cloud environment because uh, they have it glued well, very well onto their infrastructure. But you both like provide like managed Kubernetes services, so you don't always have the control of the the, the, the the scalability of the underlying infrastructure. I can perfectly scale up to a thousand pods, but I have three worker nodes, it doesn't work out. So, uh, w yeah, to, uh, how, how do you both make sure that the developer experience is not harmed by this limit? Because you can both run your platforms on-prem and, and other services. How do you control your scaling at the Knative and if, if you're using Google Kubernetes Engine and you don't check the cluster router scaler box, you also don't get scaling. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a limit. Most people seem to kind of understand that we're not giving you magical extra capacity. Although maybe if you're at a large scale, you get a little bit of oversubscription extra capacity that 
you know, was hard to extract otherwise. But I don't know, most people seem reasonably comfortable with, oh, I've got, you know, three machines, they've each got 12 cores. If I want to do more than about 30-ish cores of activity, I probably need to buy another machine. <laughs> yeah, I, I think also that that um, for for products like like OpenShift, it's uh, there's an additional persona that is not needed for a Google Cloud one. This is the operator who is really uh, driving the the cluster itself, and and of course the operator needs to to think about how we can set the limits for Canadian, like it has to do, like she or he has to do for for any other workload running on OpenShift, for example. So there's not there's no magic silver bullet that helps you with Canadian there on OpenShift serverless, and yeah, so this is something we we only can give recommendations how many services per cluster per, per node can run, but otherwise, uh, as you as you mentioned, there are so many possibilities how you can operate such clusters. There's no no very uh, uh, recipe how you can completely make it right for everyone. But one of the nice things yeah. with Knative is that all those tools that you use for managing deployments work with yeah. Knative too. So if you just set yeah, yeah. a quota on each namespace, exactly. that works regardless of whether you're using Knative or not. You, you can use the full machinery of Kubernetes for Knative, of course, yeah. because it's Kubernetes-based, so it's, it's essentially. There, there's a doc art called capacity planning, which is pretty much what you're asking for. Yeah. Lots of experience, but I don't know if there's any blog specific on Knative capacity planning that I've seen. Yeah. Uh, do you want to mention something? Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was just going to respond a little bit differently, which is that uh, when Knative started, there was one aspect of it, which was, uh, can we have a better API abstraction for an application in Kubernetes, right? Because you needed, before you would need to create a service, a deployment, an ingress, and so on. So we said, I mean, they said Knative service, right? One object, which then, you know, is going to create everything. So that meant that, you know, the, 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 sh the mental shift is a little bit different. You're not talking that much about serverless as much as, you know, you're looking for a PaaS, right? You're looking for a platform as a service, right? And a lot of people that turned to Knative, that's what they wanted. They wanted a PaaS. They wanted a new Heroku to be able to deploy uh, applications, you know, better on, and, and faster and easier on, on, on Kubernetes, right? But then, you know, we said, hey, you know, it's, it's serverless, we're gonna give you auto-scaling and, and things like this. And, and you know, with the AWS person in the room, I'm gonna say, serverless on-prem, it's totally nuts, right? So to your point, you cannot do serverless on-prem because you're not gonna be able to scale, you know, as much as in the cloud, right? Um, so, you know, bottom line, you know, you, you have a pass with Knative and then you have auto-scaling that, that you can tweak, but that you, you'll hit the limit at some point, right? So it's not, you know, really serverless, right? Okay, anybody else wants to add or? Okay, uh, any other questions from the audience? Don't be shy. Chain guard people, <laughs> creators of <They're> arguably. <laughs> they, no? they were there for most of it. I see, so they don't have any questions. So let's try to close with this question that I've been trying to ask before. Is, well, first, uh, let me ask this. How many people here are brand new to Knative? So you just hear because you just heard about Knative. Okay, so just a couple. How many people have committed to any of the projects in Knative? I know these guys, yeah. Okay, so a little bit more than 50%. And then the rest, you're just observing? Okay, that's okay, that's okay. One more question. How many people here are representative from a, say, consumer? So you're basically consuming Knative? Oh, look at that, Chain Guard, love it. <laughs> and then, how many are essentially helping build it because you're gonna sell it, right? Like you have either some kind of a product that you're based on it. Okay, not too much. Okay, so there's a bit in the middle. All right, so my question, now that you have an understanding of who the audience is, um, you have a lot of experience, not just on Knative, but also a lot of you in previous uh, you know, communities. So looking to the future, um, how can you, like, what, what are the things that you want to bring from your previous experience to Knative to make it better? And if it's something that you find that, you know, uh, on the other end, that Knative does better than the rest, what would you bring from Knative to the rest, to the other communities? Because I ask this because I've been in multiple communities and I've seen this particular community as being fantastic. I think a lot of it has to do with the people that started it. It's not because they're there, I like them, but I think they set the, the march, right, on how things should be done. So tell me your perspective, and I'll start with Evan. He's been shaking his head, so he has a lot to say. Uh, I actually took a little 
t took a little while for me to think of something, but um, there have been a couple of changes recently, um, you know, feature tracks, where um, there's a, a change proposed to roll out, and there's some extra flags to enable it. And um, everyone's been really accommodating when I pushed back and said, you know, hey, we should do this behavior by default. Everyone should get this. It shouldn't be, oh, when I want to install Knative, you know, oh, there's the default install, and then if you really want to run it, you have to set these eight or 10 extra flags. And um, doing the right thing by default, I think, is something that we do, we try to do really well, I, and I think when we miss, we try to learn from it and we fix it. And um, I really like that in comparison with, you know, I'm working on a container D change, and uh, it looks like maybe it's gonna miss two releases um, because it's hard to move these files on disk forward. Um, right. And yeah, I think we do better than that. <laughs> yeah, and it can be very generic. So, so Evan is answering about release management and all the grunt work that you have to do. If you can think of things around community or reaching out to customers or whatever, you know, bring your experience to so bear. Along with the five people in the room who are new to the project, I think uh, when I was first trying to navigate the docs, I was reaching for, like, how, how does this relate back to Kubernetes? And I was especially confused by a K native service being called a service. I thought it was a Kubernetes service. And I'm like, where is the pod running? I don't understand. Like, I got really hung up in that for a while. And so I think it would be nice when you explain everything, um, relating it back to how the traffic moves through and where the application actually is running after you. I've spent a long time trying to figure that out. And then I'll reiterate what I said about the community before. I think maybe having a welcome channel or um, a mentor, a shadowing program as happens in the Kubernetes community. And that's really nice as a way to just meet someone new who's um, like, involved in your personal journey yeah. getting started with the project. Yeah, and I think, Matt, for a long time, you were running something on Fridays, right? Like, uh, and I think, you know, Scott as well. I don't know if it's still running, but they, they used to have that on Fridays. But now yeah. that they are, you know, building the next billion dollar company, they, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> All right. Sebastian. I think you know the the biggest thing is to get as much feedback uh, from from users. Uh, you know, we, I think we've been very good from the 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 supply side. You know, the vendors and then developer of the of the technology. But we really need to bridge the gap with the users so that you know we can all improve the the user experience, the developer experience, the operational experience. So that, listening, really basically, nice. listening to our to our users. Okay. That's a good feedback. Yeah, actually, this is the same direction I really try to bring in my experience is really to provide a excellent user experience with the CLI in that case, and also try to convince people that the CLI is a good thing. It's because it's not so easy to convince people that I really stick to YAML files and really love that. And I really try to have some, I think I have some good arguments that it's good, and I want to, to elaborate on that and really to also to to level up on the DevOps story where you can really make the bridge between both worlds, so to say. So oh, yeah. Okay. We have five minutes left, so we can take one more question. Oh, Scott, look at that. Did you have uh, some swag to give us or something? He's the swag, swag meister. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to lead the witness a little bit. But, you know, so you go to Kubernetes because you want to defer some choice, maybe of like a platform choice because you want some sort of portability. You might choose Knative because you want to defer the choice of maybe even Kubernetes because there's a bunch of these managed services that run Knative. So what is the next choice deferral that we could think about trying to help? Like, what, what are people having to lock themselves into today that, that is in the purview of Knative? OK, that's a tough one. But it's a, a messaging platform, is it not? Like, if you're RabbitMQ kind of level stuff, the eventing decouples that. It's my understanding. That's what Mauricio taught me on my show recently. Any other thoughts? Do you agree? Is that true? I, I, I think Scott was also asking, what's the next thing like eventing? Uh -huh. um, and I think the function stuff is pretty promising as a, you know, hey, yes, underneath there's HTTP, but, you know, underneath there's cloud events, but you just see 
I get a thing and it's been unwrapped for me. I do my stuff and then I hand it back to you and you wrap it back up and send it off. And I don't, I don't even need to think about what that wrapping looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I can see as an extension or the next step to eventing is really to, to settle on this idea of an eventing mesh that you have really a comprehensive overview of everything of the whole topology that you have in eventing. So like a, like a single CRD that really lists all the triggers and everything else so that you really have a, have a good overview without trying to pick up everything on your own and have to lift it. So maybe really a read-only custom resource that just represents the topology of your eventing setup. So this is something where I can see that, that users can even, even have better better experience. Uh, if I understood your question properly, you know, I would say uh, the API gateway. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big thing. You, you, you face it all the time. And right now there's lots of work in, uh, in ingress, you know, alpha objects and so on that are very relevant, but you know, it's a little bit spread out. And I think we need to clarify this, uh, related to Knative. It's the fact that, uh, there is no eventing ingress. Right. And I'll give you a free answer. So when, <laughs> when I was in, in research, uh, 2000, yeah. the biggest concern that all the students were going after is this idea of dynamic composition. So you'd have a bunch of services to do, say, for instance, setting up the trip to come here, reserve a hotel, and so on. And then how could you dynamically compose it? So you have to have a way to compose the services and then dynamically instantiate it to specific ones. And I don't think we're, anybody's doing this right now. Right now, you have to kind of code it. You can use lenses stuff where you can build the functions, but you still have to put it all together to glue. Can you make it a little bit more dynamic? Uh, so that's an idea. Okay. Actually, uh, I just re remembered related to functions or something that I've, I've been pointing a couple of people at. Um, if you've ever used Firebase functions, they have a very neat mechanism for specifying what event trigger should trigger your function all in the same source file. Okay. Um, and Firebase for people that don't slick. know. It's pretty slick. It's an acquisition that Google made. I see. Okay. Um, but it's, it's its own product name. So if you just search for Firebase functions, you can see some examples of that. One final thing which I nearly forgot is really that I also agree that this composition that you mentioned uh, is really one of the next things like with uh, also with integration of serverless workflow. This could be really the combination with these kind of high level abstractions and bring those together. I think this will, will make a big thing. Together. Yeah. The time might be right. Okay, so we only have a few seconds left really. So I'll just give everybody a chance to say a final word whether or not it's a tip that you want to give people to kind of get started or you want to plug something from your company or from your work, that's fine. Uh, we appreciate your time, so we'll yeah, go first. Actually, I only want to say, please join us. We are really a great community and I really, there are still exciting things are uh, ahead and we, we really love contributions. I second this, second. yes. Yeah. Evan. That's it. I'm just so excited to be here today. That's awesome. And thank you all. <laughs> He's been stuck in his basement on a treadmill. Uh, the, my show that I keep talking about is called Enlightening. It's on tanzu.tv. I have some stickers, so come say hi, and I'll give you some stickers and hang out. Excellent. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you. Uh, super happy to be here. Part of CNCF. Yes. Very happy to be out of the house also after, you know, those two and a half years of uh, COVID. And I got a bunch of t Trigger Mesh t-shirts in my uh, backpack. Thanks. Nice. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. And you have lunch now. <laughs> Waiting. But uh, Carlos, you want to say something before? Okay. Lunch. And where is it at? Uh, I think it's outside. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have lunch. Um, and we return. Let me get the time. 1.30 or 13.30. Um, yeah, it's here outside, um, so we have lunch. Yeah, you have to eat it outside. Thank you for the panel. If there, for those end user companies, please see me if you're interested in uh, doing an interview and um, I'm doing interviews so I can schedule you. Uh, to get feedback from the community.